I first met the Dunedin-based artist James Robinson when he was in Auckland for his show at Warwick Brown's Gallery in 2018. James had recently returned from a six-month-long trip to India. Laid, laid those coins on the page. Yeah, so that's interesting. Drawing, drawing is like a little set of control, controlled little experiments based on experience. It's kind of like language. There's lots of little techniques I combine to. It's sort of like the instruments in a band that when you hear them all together it sounds like a song and um, so there's lots of little things I try and I say try because it doesn't always work so this is yeah a wee relief over the coins and this is from your psychic diaries is this a part of your psychic diaries yep this is a diary but, but the Auckland the Auckland leg um, well the show that we're in at the moment is called uh, Alienated Blues, Himalayan Miniatures. And yeah, it was a diary. It's a travel diary of me in India for six months. And I suppose drawing is just a way of locating yourself inside the chaos of life. It's mm. intimate and it's storytelling and it's adaptive. It's a container. I mean, it's a container away from um, other people influencing you. I suppose you might say it's the beginning of an internal practice. Or, and when you're an artist of any kind, you're aware of your awareness. And uh, that's the same as any classical meditation process. So I suppose I'm interested in the correlation between, you know, uh, material production of an object and the internal process of, of that. Oh, what's going on? I'm just taking a photo of you being almost reflective, but also with that little bit of lush Auckland landscape behind you. So you could say that this part of it is kind of Sometimes, sometimes I build a background up first. Yes. And these these are little miniature studies. They're not major works. Then they can be. So that material was spray paint, obviously, but it's an enamel, so it resists water. And what I like to do with often is play with um, solvencies. James Robinson is one of that rare breed of independent artist unaffiliated with either institutions or academia. So that's methylated spirits yeah. and that bleeds the biropene on that. Uh -huh. So what's happening here is I'm... It's a process. Mm, it's gorgeous the way it runs, look at that. And that will transfer through that that paper onto the page behind as well, influencing the other layer. Mm -hmm. So you might say that one thing interpenetrates another dimension. Yeah. So you basically, you're starting processes. Mm. And how much control do you have over that? Do you just sort of sit and wait and then you'll, something will happen? Do, do, do you have an idea of what will happen? Yeah. You can control it to some degree? Um, yeah, I knew what would happen when I tipped the meths on then. Yeah. But I didn't know that that lovely stream would go down like that. Right. And I suppose that's enough as an artwork on its own. Mm -hmm. But I see that as like a flowing hair or spinal column, um, being, a head being pulled off or, uh, you know, wairua 
energy release. Spirit. Which is a Maori term, Wairua. Spirit, yeah. 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 Lots of different types of artists um, let the material speak. Mm. And it's quite interesting because as we read the natural forms, you see, they aren't in themselves a narrative, but the human that comes to it projects their story onto them. Yes, okay. I think we come to our own sets of tools and methods um, of any type on our own, um, and that, that's you know that's almost as much what we make as sort of how we make it and what we make it with. And it's really interesting that everyone has their own set of rituals and languages that goes with the uniqueness of their making. And um, yeah, it's marvelous. Um, that's what is special about art because. We are, having said that, if we were all just given a good piece of paper and a biro, I, I would be very interested to see what a room full of, say a truck driver, a scientist, a professional artist, a curator, a musician, what all these different psyches would make if they just got given a biro and a piece of paper. Mm, mm. You know, because we're all in the same, we're all born with, it's a very similar um, pencil case full of stuff, you know, spine, embryonic fluid. Um, so there's a lot of things, yeah, underlining it. And that's what I like about drawing specifically because uh, here's my host, Warwick right. Brown. Ah, oh, good lord. Uh, this is Martin. Feast your eyes on this. Yeah. I'm really pleased with oh, yeah? this. Yeah. Yeah. Drawing certificate. <laughs> what do you think hey, of that? that does look flash. Isn't that nice? 195 bucks. To so frame not it. quite as cheap as I thought, but still. That's about right. I've been familiar with James's work for quite a few years now, of course, and I was on the um, judging panel when he won the Wallace Art Award back. Which is years ago. The Stitches from New Zealand Art Award. Yeah, and uh, I regard him as a, a a great example of a true uh, a true artist, whereby the work just springs forth from the artist. He's not he's not a considered artist of the sort of person who has an idea and does a sketch and mm. then squares it up and then blows it up and then works from the sketch to produce a well-considered finished work. James's work is, it springs straight out of his head onto the paper, spontaneous, yeah. It's so intensely visionary um, and you can't possibly escape some sort of personal interaction with the artist, whether you meet him or not, whether he's around or not, when you look at one of these drawings, you're immediately drawn into his personal world and mm. confronted mm. with what's going on in his head in a stream of consciousness manner. Um, with James's drawings, each and every one of them, you can sit down and really read it like a book and you can take an hour on over mm. or longer, which is, is most unusual, especially for a lot of um,
contemporary art that you see nowadays, which is throwaway stuff, in, mm. in my opinion. One quick glance and you've taken in all that it's got to offer, but with James's work, both his drawings and his paintings, you just can't do that. You can't do that. You have to wrestle with them, really, um, to try and tease out the meaning. And sometimes you come away from that with some new ideas which the work has given you. And other times you can only walk away shaking your head in a mystified manner. <laughs> it's very rare to see an artist who's coming up with this totally original vision. And of course James's work is full of text, mm. although sometimes you have to uh, look very hard to discern it. Yes, yes. And his text is, I think, deliberately um, stream of consciousness, arbitrary uh, ranting, really. Well, these are notes, remember. Yes. But yeah, it's quite intimate because it's so small. Mm. You but know, it invites, it demands intimacy. I'm about the process, so this is an internal process shared rather than, rather than scripture, as it were. But I suppose I've been dabbling in uh, the Bhagavad Gita and, and, mm. and, and hearing about the Mahabhatra epic poem mm -hmm. um, for a long time, um, as, as well as other you know, human myths. So I'm very interested in the kind of root consciousness behind a civilization and how they are fitting into a globalized um, capitalist framework. So um, I was amongst it all. Well, you know, I haven't been to India. I'm fairly familiar with traditional Indian art. And as I say, those sort of traditional mm -hmm. Indian forms don't come through in the work. But what does is James's own invented spiritualism. Instead mm -hmm. of, um, well, the, the Indian culture obviously invented all its gods at some stage back in the past and James has gone there and invented all his own new gods. If James had come back with a whole lot of Indian imagery yeah. inspired works saying I went to India and I saw yeah. this wonderful yeah. carving and it's inspired me I'd probably not be interested in the work at all but <clears throat> because it's so um, otherworldly, one might say, um, that's not the case. But certainly the whole show, this whole show is infused with a spiritual visionary quality. So insofar as that's something that's common in India, I guess uh, that plus the blue gives us the Indian link. Do you see a variation on his work or a transformation, a change? I mean, do you well, I, I, before James went away on this trip, he, he'd done a lot of these uh, indiv individual drawings. These are all duchesses, mm -hmm. but separate drawings have been joined together. So I've seen a lot of his separate drawings in the past. And there's definitely a thread through all of this work. But this seems to me to step off into um, a much much wilder, more um, surreal and imaginary space than some of the earlier work, mm -hmm. I think. But no, there's definitely consistency here with his earlier work. Um, and you can even see drawings like this one with the little burnt pages that in particular links to his larger pieces, which are larger collage works, which utilize the um, effect you get by burning, burning paper. <clears throat> and I suppose burning is something you see a lot of in India, isn't it, James? Well, yeah, burning I see. trash, burning bodies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Burning cooking fires. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like doing the, the singes on the edges of things. Edges really interest me, and I suppose in my painting practice, like mark making of all sorts, is um, so yeah, I like to see how much I can push it with paper, but 
these are really graphic studies and this sort of graphic novel, you know, narrative mm. style. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, kind of more Comic book. Comic book, yeah, yeah. that's right. Like, me and my friends used to sit around and read a lot of Judge Dredd, uh, Love and Rockets, um, Watchmen. Um, when I went, I, I, I went to normal schools, but we moved house a lot, and I went to heaps and heaps of different kinds of primary schools, so I kind of was on a big reader, and and lots of comics when I was a kid, so I suppose that's sort of normal, but yeah. It's, it's all, it just comes down to marketability. Hmm. If you're exhibiting art which makes significant demands on the viewer, uh, that they have to step up to it, as I said earlier, wrestle with it, analyse it, come to some sort of conclusion about what it's supposed to be doing, what was in the mind of the artist, which is now spilled out on the paper in front of you, it, 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 some dealers would feel that puts too many demands on the on the viewers, and therefore it's going to be harder to sell mm. than something which is much Pleasing. easier to take in at one quick glance.